This is Mark Mullinax, and welcome back to Power for the Peaceful, a podcast and class on Taoism. Today, bonus episode two. Why is Lao Tzu smiling? The power of reframing. When you listen to the ground and you put your roots down, you can hear what she says if you're listening. When you listen to the ground and you put your roots down, you can hear what she says if you're listening. The sweet sound of the river as she moves over the stones. The same song that the blood in your body sings as it weaves around your bones. When you're listening, when you're listening, are you listening? I have lived with a cat named Dharma since 2004. She is almost 19 years old. Maybe it was caused by trauma or aging, but three to four years ago, she started a wail, which can only be described as the cry of her people. Yowls at any hour of the day and night. A racket that can be heard by people on the street with their windows closed. You may have actually heard her in the background of some earlier episodes of this podcast. You can imagine the increased stress my partner and I have experienced trying to hold down jobs and regularly visiting aging and, in two cases, dying parents. My partner's early morning conversation always included our awareness of the nocturnal caterwauling the hour and how dharma impacted our sleep. Last fall, I hit a new low in my ability to hold dharma in compassionate regard. I was a person not at peace whenever she howled, and her first cries of a 30 to 60 second long, loud, operatic episode would send me over the edge. I daily found myself fantasizing her dying before her time, including euthanasia. I was at my wit's absolute end of how our feline household member and I would be able to live at the same address. For my part, there is no compassion, no flexibility of feeling, and only despair and hopelessness in finding a solution. And then it got worse. Dharma started needing food, and only small bits of food all the time. If any old food was left after one feeding, whether five minutes ago or 55 minutes ago, she would require a complete change of stale food with fresh food, or else there would be yowling. Without fresh food, her yowling multiplied. This was an hourly thing. It is important to confess that I thought that the final solution to this problem was to be one I could apply to this cat, whether at the veterinarian or at some other level. One evening, completely exhausted and completely saturated with anger against Dharma, I remember a meditation that could help. In Buddhism, it's called metta, or reframing the world your brain has presented to your consciousness as an exercise and practice for sending out compassion, starting with oneself. So, with Dharma eating one of her 20 daily little meals beside me, I started the meditation with a well wish for me. May I be at peace and fulfilled. After a few moments of that, I continued with a meditative well wishing for my family. A few minutes later, the well wishing circle of compassion extended to people I had come across that day, but really didn't know. Finally, I was supposed to include the hardest to love people. May even my enemies be at peace and fulfilled. Now, the goal of this may not really to make the other person you meditate about peaceful and happy in themselves, but yourself. The goal here is clarity of vision, to regard each created thing as already perfected. I had to reach this psychic point where the people or situations I hated are the very subjects of peace and compassion. I needed to turn mud 
into pottery, my crap into fertilizer, my sad song into a better one. So in a moment of feeling useless, but also in an I'll try anything at this point attitude, I meditated compassion for my neighboring cat, Dharma. Dharma, may you feel compassion, peace, and fulfillment. For a couple of days, this happened, this metta meditation, every hour of my waking life. Five minutes an hour of spending time with, feeling alongside, feeling with Dharma. Compassion. Now today, after six months, 19-year-old Dharma is still Dharma, but now she is my aging cat, perhaps traumatized as a kitten before she joined our household with issues she cannot understand or control. But it is I who's different, because within a day of starting this metta reframing, I sensed a softening of hard anger, a dissolving of abhorrence and hatred, in a lessening of my toxic relationship with this cat. I no longer had fantasies of living without Dharma, but instead there is this path through, a story that can bind both of us until death do us part. I think if you were to ask my partner, you might hear that I grew more compassionate in our relationship too. For without quick reactive anger and hatred towards Dharma, I had more room for compassion with everyone else. Without Dharma totally blocking and clogging my neural pathways, there was more space and room for resilient love and care for others. Hashtag emptiness. It's called reframing, but that's a psychological term. You turn an enemy into a friend. And we know in our own lives that we should do this a lot more often because there are Dharmas everywhere, tough situations and people in our lives for which our reactivity against solves nothing and creates really bad headspace. Such bad headspace creates bad weather throughout our daily routines for we carry unhealthy regard for our dharmas or someone else into every other space we're in. But this reframing is something else, something healthier, Because remember in Taoism that we are originally healthy, originally peaceful and harmonious. In her own right, there's a place in Dharma that is still healthy, always peaceful, harmonious. And in my own being, this is my birthright too. I too emerge from Tao's womb as completed, peaceful, curious, spontaneous, not enslaved to misperceptions that would paint the world in dark or bad tones. Dharma and I are womb mates, not tomb mates. Taoism is all about cleaning and then opening ever wider the doors of your perception. We were born with them wide open, but life's slings and arrows has us closed off and closed down in certain areas, unwilling to re-engage with a part of life we feel is dead. What if the dead is not dead? What if Dharma is actually my, quote, Dharma, that is, my teacher, my duty? With Taoism, the world is not a setter of traps, but a teacher of valuable lessons, lessons that we can use reminding of. But reminding us of what? Only our original goodness and peace. Not just mine, not just my partners, but Dharmas too. And not just Dharmas, but everyone and anyone you may have developed, after your birth, a less than peaceful view about. Unpeaceful views, being secondary after birth, are false, artificial, and ultimately toxic. When you're listening, when you're listening, are you listening? When you're listening, when you're listening, are you listening? A story found in a picture you can see from the link in the show notes is this. It's called the Three Vinegar Tasters picture. You can Google it if you like. In the picture, there are three wise-looking Asian sages, the Buddha, Confucius, and Lao Tzu, 
each of whom is an originator of an Asian spiritual tradition. The reaction of each after tasting the vinegar is instructive. First, Confucius wears a sour expression because Confucianists understand life was rather sour. The way of humanity and human nature are out of touch with the way of heaven. Buddha holds a bitter expression because, as a Buddhist, life was bitter. Buddhism's first principle is that life is filled with desires that lead to bitterness and suffering. Third, Lao Tzu holds a very happy expression and is depicted as smiling. To Taoists, life may be unpleasant at times, yes, just as vinegar has an unpleasant taste, but working in harmony with life's circumstances changes what you may at first perceive as negative into something originally positive. Sourness and bitterness come from an unappreciative mindset. Simply said, Taoism teaches very practical and pragmatic things like how to appreciate, learn from, and work with whatever it is that happens in your everyday normal life. Anyone not in favor of that? Lao Tzu recognizes that vinegar, or our cat Dharma, is what it is. And our perception of it is biased by our judgment of what it should be. As he stated in his Tao Te Ching, and as I'll quote from in about three minutes, all earth and all the creation and heavens emerge from and operate by the same primordial and ancient processes, simplicity, peace, spontaneity. This operating system affects not just heavenly bodies, but the activities of animals, whether on land, in the sea, or in the sky. According to Lao Tzu, the more we interfere with the natural balance and harmonics of the universal processes, the further away harmony retreats often to the distance. The more forcing we do, the more trouble we have. Whether hefty or light, moist or parched, slow or fast, everything has its own original nature already born with it, which cannot be violated without causing difficulties. When artificial or arbitrary forces get forced from the outside, like my perceptions of Dharma, struggle is inevitable. And then life does become sour and bitter, not something to smile at. So why is Lao Tzu smiling? First, and maybe very importantly, smiling is a choice. Dharma, my neighboring cat, or your equivalent of Dharma, is not sour, bitter, or somehow lacking, but needs to be seen as emerging from a peaceful, harmonious background that produces us all. We all emerge from the same womb, Dharma and me, even the people I cannot stand and me, womb mates, all. This view is a matter of choice, free will. Smiling is an act of free will. We can each withstand a little more reframing, can we not? For when we don't reframe, but stay the same, we are giving up our free will to change ourselves. Tao is about the right framing of reality. There are some things you cannot change in your lifetime, like the views of the people who do not vote or worship the same way as you or the so-called enemies of your country, but you can live more harmoniously with them all when you consider all of us in the same boat as womb companions from the very start. We don't have to convert people we think of as enemies, just be willing to be changed by them. Like when I let a small cat named Dharma change me like forever. I am not better than anyone else. I'm just reporting on what I've found. Who is your dharma equivalent? What situation drives you nuts and that nuttiness blends into every other relationship that you have? The good news is you do not have to change them. You just start with yourself. And soon you start treating these former enemies as necessary companions. The womb brothers and sisters that they actually are because we are all family. We can each choose the free will right now to make that family more our own reality. 
So if you're ever going to find peace and harmony, it will not be in some utopian, conflict-free zone. It will be within the chaos. We cannot torch this world and make from its ruins a world we would want it to be. Taoism teaches how to value everything's original being or nature way before we first met them. And this is good news because for us, we do not need to regard whatever we think enlightenment is as an altered state of consciousness or an ultimately alien mystical state that results in thinking and actions far removed from the world. No, enlightenment is everyday normal realizations and reframings. Your version of your Dharma and you will still coexist, but you can change your inner habits of anger and troublemaking into a daily practice of an enlightenment in which we each relate closely to the nature and the flow of life, where we engage vibrantly with the world and immediate connection. I think this connected life, not an alienated one, is our real and abiding home. I'll conclude with a verse I'll address in full in a couple of weeks, verse 16, which I call the end of fear. It goes like this. Pledge allegiance to unlimited emptiness. Dedicate yourself to uncompromised silence. Notice how the 10,000 things arise, but also how each returns to its root. This return to root is start, finish, and fruit of tranquility. It's the why of Tao, the purpose of eternity. Have this permeate your mind and become enlightened, but stay ignorant, and one's future is chaos. And disaster. Now here's the take-home lines. When you align with your eternal source, your life evolves into acceptance of all that overlays onto the dignity of all, that borders with heaven, the source of all, that follows Tao, which is eternal. When you're aligned like this, fear never comes near. In other words, there's no place where we are ever disconnected or distanced from Tao. So once upon a time, there was a cat. Dharma began as a newborn kitten with inborn cuteness, curiosity, and charm. Once upon a time, there was a me, an I, also with pre-existent cuteness, curiosity, and charms. Along the way, however, I came to forget my original nature and settled for less and use that lessness as the only palette from which I could paint my world, including my disdain and disregard for Dharma in our last few years. But we are better than that. And that's my bonus this week. Next time, an episode on verse 15. I cannot wait to meet our class again. This podcast remains a labor of love, designed, written, and co-produced by many whose central idea is that Tao Te Ching is good news for today. Tao still speaks. Audrey Davis is our artist. Molly Hartwell sings her song, Put Your Roots Down. Fortress Press holds the copyright for quotations from my Tao Te Ching translation. Thanks to you for your attendance in this class on Taoism. May your days begin in peace and become wombs for radical hope. Are you listening?